in the days of the stories, long before the Normans ever arrived in Ireland, the royal site of Rathcrohan, Crook and I, was a very important place. Back then, it was where the kings and queens of Connacht lived and built their palace houses in what was already a very ancient landscape. So many exciting stories gather around Royal Rathcrohan, like the elite hero's quarrel that begins the wonderful tale of Brickrew's feast, or the spooky Samhain adventures of Nera. And of course, there is a great cycle of stories that make up the Tonbo Cunha. The main story begins with a disagreement between the Queen of Connacht, Methel, and her consort, King Alil. But one of the most important roles of these royal sites was to hold regular, at least once a year, regional oinachs. These were very important gatherings and celebrations. They probably didn't take place right at Crook and I. The stories placed them closer to the river, probably near Loch Ree. But what was an oinach? How did they work? An Oinuk was kind of a big party. Everyone who was anyone had to be seen at it. There was lavish feasting and music and storytelling and all the guests had a great time. So it was a time for feasting and entertainment. Yes, but it was also like the Olympic Games. There were chariot racing and horse racing with sporting competitions of every kind. Every warrior wanted to become a champion. And there were poetry and story competitions too. Oh, there were loads of prizes. There was also a fashion show. Everyone showed off their most expensive clothes and finest jewels. And of course, in the days before YouTube and Facebook, it was a great opportunity to pass on news and make sure that Everyone had heard about your latest exploits. It was a great time for boasting and bragging. And perhaps even more importantly, laws were made, treaties sealed and disputes settled. There are so many stories about Crookham that are really worth retelling and celebrating, even today, especially the exciting torn stories. For the last few years, schools from all around Roscommon have gathered together at Rathcrohan Mound to meet up with Queen Mother and support the launch of the Torn March Festival as it begins its journey across Ireland. It wasn't possible for the Torn March Festival to take place in May 2020 or 21, but that hasn't stopped us. No, not at all. So. Welcome to the Ross Common Schools, Oinok. But it is still quite difficult to get together for parties and sports and social distancing isn't very easy at an Oinok. And where are we going to find horses and chariots? We have something that no one had at the time of our stories. You see, we have the internet. We can hold our Oinok online. It's a virtual Oinok. Pity about the chariots, though. I'm afraid we couldn't quite manage those. During October, schools from all around Roscommon have been finding out all about the people who created the stories. There are the storyteller poets, the elite champion warriors, the hospitable brugus, as well as all the clever craftspeople from the stories. They have been discovering more old stories and creating their own new stories and poems worthy of the greatest of the storyteller poets. They have been taking on feats and challenges as dramatic as any of those the elite warrior athletes attempted. They have been designing jewellery and weapons as magnificent as any created by the crafters of the stories. So come on in to our virtual feasting hall. Everything is ready. 
Come and see what magical tales our young Roscommon storyteller poets have to share with us. Whenever we get the chance to meet up to celebrate together, at a party or on social media, everyone wants to share their latest news, gossip, stories. Everybody has a story to tell. It wasn't so different back in the time of the Oinox. Everyone introduced themselves with extravagant hero names or exaggerated colourful tales of their latest exploits. These could be exciting, funny, scary stories, but most importantly, they had to be memorable stories. At an Oinok, you were only as good as your latest story. To make an impact, you would need the skill of a storyteller poet. After finding out about the storyteller poets from long ago, all the classes made their own praise poems in a style a bit like the ones used by the poets back then. These were a great way of creating memorable introductions. So, here are just a few of the I Am praise poems. I am orange like the sun in the summer. I am a cow lying in the grass. I am snow landing on the lake. I am an armchair burning in the sun. I am a pair of underwear. I am cheese melting in the oven. I am the blue sky in summer. I am a feisty tiger. I am snow in winter. I am a cozy blanket. I am a fluffy warm scarf. I am a little spoon of chocolate powder. I am as red as a rose bed. I am a snow fox sleeping in my home under the snow. I'm thunder thrashing through the sky. I'm a cupboard containing it all. I'm a warm hat holding in the heat and knowledge. I'm a fruit salad full of health. I'm a blossom tree blossoming in the spring. I am blue as the summer sky. I am a butterfly fluttering by. I am the rain pretty as vain. I am a bed as lazy as dead. I am a cap white as a map. I am a carrot as orange as a rabbit. I am as green as the growing grass. I am a fox in my den. I am the sunshine helping the crops grow. I am a bed going to sleep. I am a pair of Aditas predator gloves. I'm chicken nugget, nice and tasty. Just like all the visitors to the Connacht Oinock long ago, everyone enjoyed some very old hero stories. Like the one about King Fergus, who met a strange and underwater pest. He was given magic herbs to stick in his ears that let him breathe underwater. Fergus MacLeager defeated the horrifying Pest and gathered some very unusual other world treasures. And of course, we did get to share stories from the dramatic, epic, heroic and sometimes tragic Tonbo Cunha. And then everyone got around to adding new stories about their own imagined greatest exploits. Well, that's okay, because everybody was quite happy making up stories back then in the time of the Oinox. Warriors and storytellers can all be heroes at an Oinox. Some of our modern storytellers even put the most exciting action sequences into poetry, just like the poets did back in the time of the stories. Well, back then you couldn't film action sequences. You had to make them with words. So let's meet a few new champions. The other world. The lightning lit up the sky as our heroes roamed through the forest. They groaned with each little movement. As they walked, the trees became scarcer. Our heroes travelled for an hour and eventually found the lake. And sure enough, a portal was there. They lurched forward towards the portal. Our heroes stepped out to a small cavern. So, what is your hero name? I am Cojan Connor, and I am Terrific Thomas. What strange otherworld creature did you meet? A humongous five-headed snake. I think it's a hydra. Did you defeat this creature with weapons or words? 
Connor pulled out his sword, which burst into a black flame, and Terrific Thomas brandished his bow. Connor leapt toward the beast, slicing one of its head off. Connor landed and looked at the beast and stared at it. It had grown back two heads. It then spread wing and started hovering over in the place. Cojan Connor was bewildered. The beast swung around and hit Cojan Connor with his tail slamming him up against a boulder. Thomas fired repeated barges of arrows, yet all of them bounced off its strong scale. It lunged forward at Terrific Thomas, smacking him across the cavern. Cojan Connor pounced at him again, slicing off its heads, but it grew back too. Connor repeated this process over and over, and eventually it had over a hundred heads. Cojan Connor collapsed to the ground. Terrific Thomas studied the beast. Connor stood up again, ready to repeat the process, but Thomas called, Quit your dilly dallying. I have an idea. Terrific Thomas whispered, I'm going to distract it as you climb up the back of it and stab your sword right through its chest. Cojan Connor nodded and Thomas ran circles around the beast, shooting it in the eyes with his arrows. Connor did what he was instructed. He ran around the back of the beast and stabbed it through the heart. The beast wailed in pain. It toppled over, landing on Cojan Connor. Thomas laughed like a drain. Stop laughing and help me out, Cojan Connor roared. Terrific Thomas did as he was told and helped Connor out, still chuckling to himself. And what treasure did you win from the other world? Connor sawed off the beast's wings and sewed them to his leather armour. Thomas picked up a gargantuan-sized egg. He planned on raising whatever creature was inside of it. But Cojan Connor was planning on making a Herculean-sized scrambled egg. The two passed through the portal once again. They turned round and sauntered back home. So, meet more of our Oinok heroes and weavers of words. Who has the shiniest sword? Who has designed the most magnificent shield? Who has discovered the most unusual and magical weapons? Who has made the wisest judgments? Now the poets made sure that the king or queen gave good judgments at an Oinok. Some of our classes discussed what judgments might be fair. What might the penalty have been for stealing a neighbour's cow or pig? And then eating it before they could be persuaded to give it back? What might you decide was fair? There were strict rules made about caring for trees. If you cut down one of the important trees like oak, yew, ash, apple or hazel, you would have to pay the price of a cow in milk and that was a lot in those days. Who will be top champion for this Oinok? In the time of the stories, only one Oinok hero was chosen to be top champion and as part of the prize, got to have the first cut of the whole pig roasted for the feast. Now this champion could eat as much as they wanted before even the king or queen got to take one bite. In another story set at Rathcrohan, King Alil offered a golden sword to his top champion Nera as a prize for a Samhain feast dare. A roast pig, a golden sword. What would you choose as a prize? One thing I know is that we have so many gifted word weavers and designers in Roscommon schools, it would be impossible to select just one champion. I think I know what Queen Mother would have done. She would have wanted every one of you as her personal champions. 
So well done. Congratulations. Until we meet, maybe at another Roscommon Oinox celebration. <laughs>